Hi, it's Tom from Green Shorts, and it's time to make the Uber rocket stove. I say Uber because of the eight or so videos I've made about the concrete rocket stove. I've gotten hundreds of amazing comments and suggestions, and improvements to the design. When I added perlite to the mixture a couple of videos ago, I also incorporated a lot of the comments and suggestions that I thought improved the design. But even on that video, I got more that I feel like take this stove to the Uber level. I'm going to make two versions. One version is gonna use the grate underneath with a flat wood entry. And the second version is gonna be a setup for a feed ramp, which I tested on a recent video as well. That is going to incorporate a tilted design to the roof of the firebox. But the first video we're gonna do using the half gallon milk jug to create our flat wood entry that's gonna be elevated on a grate to provide airflow. All right, enough talking, let's get started. One of my favorite innovations on this stove via a comment came from Richard Bell Sr. He suggested that I use some threaded inserts and bolts to create the pot standoffs. The threaded inserts, of course, will go inside the bucket and then these will thread in from the top. The beauty of that is that it's going to allow me to adjust the height of my pot standoffs. It's also gonna be a whole lot cleaner than my rebar and tape solution that I used on the last build. That was a bit of a catastrophe. It worked, but it didn't look pretty. The first version of this stove, I used quarter inch bolts that I stuck down into the grass to create the pot standoffs. These holes are just the right size for me to thread these 3 8 bolts through the soft plastic. I've got some long ones and some short ones. These will go on the inside, these will go on the outside. I'll show you how this is gonna work in just a second. These don't have to be perfectly even at this stage because they're gonna be adjustable once the stove is poured. Now that I've got these in here, let's flip it over and then we'll add the threaded inserts on the inside. So my threaded inserts don't fill up with concrete and to help anchor them, I'm going to thread this small short bolt in on the inside and I'm gonna secure that with a little bit of super glue. You could use thread lock or um, any of several options. I just happen to have some super glue around. I'm only going in well, a little bit under a quarter inch, just, to, just enough to hold this. The carriage bolt here is actually gonna act as an anchor in the concrete as well. So it will help hold the threaded insert in place. If, it, if this was just in the concrete by itself, it might be susceptible to being pulled out just because of the smoothness of the sides here. So this will anchor it in nicely. Now I'm gonna thread the inserts down onto the bolts coming in from the outside of the bucket. All right, the inserts are set up. Richard, thank you for a brilliant idea. I'm also gonna cover my rebar holes with some tape. That, of course, will keep the concrete from flowing out. If you're starting with a fresh bucket, of course, you won't need to do this. Many of you also suggested that I forego lining the form with cardboard and instead use a release agent. Suggestions were vegetable oil, used motor oil, wax, and several others. Emirates, Doug, Blake, Elizabeth, and Mr. Mischief I appreciate the suggestions. Keep the great comments coming. I'm opting to use some Pam olive oil no stick cooking spray. So I'm gonna coat the inside of the bucket form with this. I chose olive oil just because it, you know, it tastes better. Believe me, I was happy to skip all of the cardboard setup 
that was a lot of work. I had a lot of comments also that suggested going back to an armature, which I had left out of the last stove, which cracked on me. So for that, I'm going to use a scrap of some fence that I salvaged from the local recycling event. I'm volunteering to run the scrap metal component of the local recycling event has yielded me a ton of free material. A lot of good stuff. So think about perhaps doing that in your community. Got this pre-cut for the circumference that I need. So I'm gonna line this up and cut it for depth. Wire cutters would be perfect for this task, but for the life of me, I can't find them. You would understand if you saw my shop. So instead, I'm gonna use a cutoff wheel on my grinder and some eye protection. I'm gonna bend this in a circle and then wrap the excess around this joint to tighten up this armature. Do a quick test fit. Round this out a little bit better. Just need to cut out a section for the firebox. And instead of cutting this off, I'm just gonna bend it over. Just a little extra reinforcement for the top of the firebox. I also had several comments that pointed to the correct ratio of the three ingredients I'm using for this mix. The Portland cement, the perlite, and the sand. Copenhagen King, who says he's a certified concrete mason, recommended a three to one to two ratio of sand to concrete to perlite. And Lether and John Paitaki recommended a ratio of two to one to three of sand to concrete to perlite. While I'm inclined to go with the pro on his recommendations, I actually wanna see if I can get away with a higher perlite mixture, just because I feel like that would allow for a higher insulated property. With all due respect to the Copenhagen King, I'm gonna go with a two to one to three ratio recommended by John Paitaki and Lether. Thanks guys. Mr. Copenhagen King, I give you the right to a told you so if this thing doesn't work out. In addition to ratios, I also had some suggestions about using a drier mix. Derber of Derber's Discoveries, check out his channel, I'll put a link below, has been doing some experimentation with this rocket stove design and ratios of perlite to concrete. And he had an interesting suggestion, which was to wet the perlite first, let the water soak in, and then add dry concrete to the perlite. And I'm gonna give that method a try. But before I do the mix, I'm gonna spray down the rest of the formwork with the cooking spray. All right, let's mix. Elizabeth's comment also recommended that I wear a mask while I'm mixing up the concrete. Cement dust is not something that you want in your lungs, even a little bit. Thanks, Elizabeth. Derber, I'm using my, uh, my version of a Blackhawks cup. The Atlanta version, that is. It's maybe a little too wet. But I'm gonna let that soak in a little bit. All right, this is perked for a couple of minutes. Now let's add the sand. My creek sand, two parts. And I'm gonna add the cement now as well. One part. And mix. I'm 
a little bit of debris in my creek sand here, but it was free. This feels way too wet to me. A little harder to handle with as much in here as I've got. This feels like a good consistency to me here. Pretty dry, but it still clumps up. I'm gonna shoot for that. Since my hand's already messy, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in with the I don't want my armature all the way to the bottom, so I've lifted it up a little bit. So I got about an inch or so of concrete underneath it. Half an inch to an inch should be fine. Got a stake here. I'm gonna tamp it down. I think what's happening is that the perlite soaks up the water and then the cement pulls the water out of the perlite. So I'm actually liking the consistency I'm getting here. Initially I thought this was going to be much too dry, but it feels pretty good. I know working concrete with your hands is not the best option because it sucks the moisture out of your hands. Dipping my hand in the water every time I touch this stuff, but still gonna dry my hands out. Just a quick look at this perlite with the water in it. I've got just a little bit of water in the bottom there. It's all coated pretty well. So that's about the right consistency of moisture that you want to mix this up properly. I purposely left the legs here on the armature long so that I could see exactly where the bottom was going to be and then I can bend them over to act as more horizontal stabilization. I'm making sure to avoid having any sticking out into the chimney area. My hand was starting to feel dry, so I went ahead and grabbed a latex glove. In the end, I did need to surround the milk jug, a cardboard sleeve, just because of the gaps in the milk jug itself. 
Just stick this in there. All right, another batch. Just mixed up a half batch. I figured that would be enough to finish it off. So I've waited about two and a half days to unform this. I wanted it to cure enough to be stable enough to pull it out of the form, but of course it's got to continue to cure for another 28 days before I test fire it. That's one thing I learned from the comments. The industry standard for concrete curing time is 28 days. So I'll pull the milk jug out and then flip the bucket over. Before I can get this thing to pop out of the bucket, I need to undo these bolts which go into the thread inside. They should come out pretty easily. Now I'm just going to give the, a gentle push to the bottom of the bucket here. See if I can release that. And Alright, I'm not going to be gentle. Tap the bottom of the bucket. Ooh. Now we get to see how well this mold release worked. I've not unformed one of these yet, but using the, the oil. One advantage of my cardboard solution is that the rocket stove slid right out of the bucket. But since we used the cooking spray this time, I'm going to use a rubber mallet to unform it because it's not wanting to come out on its own. All right, it uh, appears that the cooking spray wasn't enough of a lubricant to make this thing come out, at least not yet. And I'm concerned, well I don't want to damage this stove inside by banging on it too much more with this, with this mallet. So I'm going to try one more thing before I sacrifice the bucket, which is to put some blocks around the edge and see if I can't get this thing to drop out. Aha! Oh no. Alright, so, failure. The mix, the initial mix on this was just way too dry and it did not cure. It may not have helped either that I was pounding, the, pounding this thing. Alright, so, <laughs> when we fail, we try again. But I am going to see if I can salvage the bolts that are in here. Uh, the armature may be beyond. So just goes to show you, I don't just show you the successes. <laughs> I also show you the failures. I will say that the mix down here seems to be a lot more rigid and durable. So just that first mix, that first batch that was too, just too dry. Although honestly, um, the shape is all there. What I might try and do is chip away what's here that's really brittle and then maybe hand, hand form the top of it with some concrete and a trowel. So maybe this isn't 100% of a failure. 
let's see if we can get the middle tube out and and then um, we'll assess the situation again. I think this is a back to the drawing board situation. Not necessarily in my mixture of perlite and sand and, and cement, but rather how much water I'm using to mix it. So I did have a little bit of variety in the water that I used um, on the four or five batches that I made, so I'm a little more comfortable with where it needs to be to get to this consistency versus this consistency. All right, so I'm going to leave this video right here and I'm going to go back to the drawing board. But as always, our mission here at Green Shorts is to help you see green so you can be green and save a little green by doing it yourself. We'll make the mistakes so you don't have to. Thanks for watching. Please like and share and subscribe for a new DIY video almost every Friday.